Hi guys! Welcome back. Uh, as you can probably see, uh, I am filming in somewhat unfamiliar surroundings. That's because I am uh, visiting my family for Christmas in America. And uh, I will be doing that for the next couple of weeks. So uh, all the upcoming videos are also going to be shot here. Um, so, what am I going to be doing for you this week? Well, it is vacation, so I'm going to be easing into uh, video making a little bit, but I've got a topic that I know a lot will appeal to a lot of you, and it's probably particularly appropriate given the fact that I'm here in America. And what I have is this guy for you. Let's see if I can hold it up so you can see really, really well what I've got. This is, of course, if you can see, a World War II American GI figure. This one is from North Star, so artisan figures. Uh, you can see kind of I've already uh, prepped him and painted his skin. Uh, he's a pretty basic figure, uh, really just your standard uniform, standard equipment, pretty minimal. Um, and so that's going to mean a lot of browns and khakis and that kind of thing. But even though this is a really simple figure, I know it should be really useful to a lot of you because this kind of figure really forms the backbone of pretty much all American armies from the period. Even if you're not painting a normal uh, grunt, you're probably going to have guys wearing some variation of this uniform somewhere in your army. And I do know how um, important these sort of basic uniforms seem to be for people. So, you know, I thought it was high time that I just covered this guy, because I think the only other American World War II guy I've had so far has been an Airborne, which is also really cool, but, you know, representatively, you know, there were an awful lot more of these guys out there than there were Airborne soldiers. So, the lighting is going to probably be a little bit different, it's going to be a little bit, things are going to feel probably a little bit different in this film, but hopefully it should still be pretty clear what I'm working on, and I'm still going to be working mostly with Vallejo paints, in fact, probably more so here, just because, well, it's America and we know founder paints are harder to get here, so this is going to be mostly Vallejo, as always, and, um, yeah, I think that's about it. So why don't we go ahead and get started with this American GI figure. Now many parts of the American World War II uniform were kind of a khaki green color, but the pants were a bit of an exception. They were quite a bit darker and very distinctly brown. So I'm going to be base coating my pants here using a Vallejo burnt umber as the undercoat. I'm then going to darken those pants even further by adding a really strong wash of Agri-X Earthshade. Once that uh, uh, wash is all dry on the pants, I'm going to start applying my first highlight color. And in order to make that, I've taken some of the Vallejo uh, Burnt Umber and I've mixed a bit of Vallejo Beige Brown into it to sort of lighten it up but still kind of maintain a fairly uh, complementary shade. And I'm applying it here now pretty thinly, uh, blending it out a little bit. I will definitely build up a couple of layers of that paint here. And the only areas I'm really gonna be avoiding are as usual the deep creases and folds and you know, the areas under his legs where there's really gonna be some extreme dark shadow going on. And then for my next highlight layer, I'm going to kind of continue in the same way, but now I've mixed even more of the beige brown into my uh, burnt umber to lighten it even further. And I'm just going to continue going back over, as I always do, uh, gradually sort of progressively lightening areas where, you know, there would just be more light and sort of avoiding areas that are slightly darker. And you can see the paint's pretty thin as usual, and I am definitely, you know, blending very carefully sort of from the brightest areas sort of down towards areas that are in a little bit more shadow. And now I'm just taking some pure beige brown and I'm going to start layering it. Mostly you can see her on the tops of folds and creases and on his knees and on um, the backs of his sort of thighs and calves and those sorts of things. And I am, of course, going to be building it up a little bit so that we get, you know, a really, you know, nice depth of color in the areas that are going to be needing it. And now for my final highlight on the pants, I've mixed a little bit of Iraqi sand into my beige brown just to lighten it even more. And this is going to be working kind of as an edge highlight 
though of course these pants don't really have any seams or anything like that to speak of but I am going to use it kind of lightly here on the tops of strong folds uh, because it's a pretty bright color you're not going to want to apply too many layers of this because it'll just get too light but you can sort of apply it thinly sort of as one layer and so that a lot of the under colors show through and I as you can see I'm really blending this color out extensively where I do apply it just so it doesn't get too strong or just lighten up my pants more than I really want. I'm pretty happy with the pants so now I'm going to move on to the other major areas of the uniform which include his jacket, his spats, and his equipment belts and canteen and, the, and these were kind of a greenish khaki color. Now I have no doubt that Vallejo makes a color specifically for US World War II uniforms but I don't actually have it so I had to improvise and kind of come up with my own color. So the base I'm using here is uh, primarily khaki but I have darkened it down and made it a little bit greener by adding in some German dark green and also a bit of burnt umber uh, just to get it. And that's, those colors are mostly just to darken it down for this kind of first base coat layer. And I'll be building it up to a much lighter shade before I'm done. To achieve even more darkness and even more sort of shading in all of the folds of his uniform, uh, I'm now gonna apply a pretty heavy Agrax Earthshade wash to everything just like I did on the pants. After the wash dries, my first highlight layer is going to be kind of similar to my base coat but just a little bit lighter. So I'm taking khaki here and now just mixing a rather small amount of the burnt umber and the German dark green into it but not nearly so much because we want it to be distinctly lighter and I'm just going to start going over pretty much every area with this. I'm going to be blending it out some but since this is the first highlight layer you're going to want pretty complete coverage except for as always all the really dark deep shadowed areas and all the really strong creases but you can pretty much feel free to put this color everywhere else and so that's what I'm going to be doing uh, and again keep it thin and build up a couple layers just so you can get some extra sort of d definition going on and a little bit of extra shading and you know just a bigger range of color because that'll make the ultimate figure a lot more interesting which is uh, particularly relevant since this is a fairly straightforward uh, unit that doesn't have a lot of detail so you need to make sure that what the simple areas that you do paint are interesting and varied looking. I'm now continuing the highlighting process using just pure khaki though I have put just a hint of the German dark green in here just a tiny bit not really to darken the color but more just to get a little bit more of a green cast to it because the khaki is a pretty green color but I don't think it's quite green enough for the American uniform so that's why I added just a little bit more and I'm just continuing here and highlighting pretty much everywhere with this color I'm you know obviously I'm gonna be doing it a little bit less a little bit um, more subtly than I did on my last layer but just continuing in the same vein to sort of build it up um, and blend it out into the sort of dark or more uh, sort of shadowed areas and you can see areas like the water bottle for example which are quite exposed are going to really get a lot of color build up on his shoulders um, the back his back those areas are really going to be left are going to be get, getting quite a bit of this paint coverage whereas some areas that are more uh, hidden like under his arms and at his front and stuff those are going to be not getting very much of this paint it's going to be applied much more thinly to those regions my final sort of general highlight, that is the one I'm going to be applying pretty much everywhere, that now takes the uh, khaki color I had before, but adds a little bit of Iraqi sand to it to lighten it up. And um, I didn't make the step between this one and the last color too extreme, so uh, you can put it on, um, you know, uh, pretty um, thickly and um, you don't have to spend too much time blending it should just transition pretty naturally and I'm going to be really as you can see focusing this really on a lot of small detail areas and tops of folds and creases the edges of his arms uh, his collar uh, really the top of his back all those areas where you'd expect there to be quite a bit of light hitting the figure 
And then for my sort of final, really final, final highlight, I've mixed in even more Iraqi sand, so it's really very bright now. And this is being applied as an edge highlight to the uniform, so along his collar and the edge of his sleeves, and just sort of as an edging, really, pretty much everywhere, and on some very high creases. And just, yeah, seams, things like that is really where I'm going to be mostly putting this color. Um, so because it's being applied here as an edge highlight, it won't require too much blending outward. You can just kind of paint fairly fine transparent lines and kind of go from there. Uh, I do blend it out in a couple places like I put a little tiny bit on the top of his uh, backs of his shoulders it's really just to get it really bright there and then just sort of carefully blend outwards but for the most part this should really just be that sort of edging color. Now the equipment pouches and bits on his belt were generally lighter and more yellow than the rest of his uniform. Uh, so we can use the same colors to paint those, but we do need to highlight them further and just lighten them further. So the easiest thing here is, is just to take some pure Iraqi sand. You can add a teeny tiny bit of khaki if you want and just continue brightening those areas up, making them more yellow and making them even lighter. And that's what I'm doing here. So this is only going to be going on those sort of equipment pieces and nowhere else on his uniform. And if you want an even higher highlight, you can even mix like a little bit of white into your Iraqi sand and use that as sort of an extreme edge highlight on these pieces if you need to. Obviously you can see there's going to be a lot on the water bottle and just you know any and all of those kind of edges though underneath his front sort of there's going to be more shadow where he's holding up his gun so you don't need to worry about in this figure at least highlighting those areas so extensively. Now the American helmet was kind of a deep green color, so I'm base coating mine using that um, German dark green that I already had out. And yeah, this is pretty easy. Just make sure you get a good coat and are, are careful kind of doing the under areas of the helmet. And I'm then going to follow that with a really quick wash of Agrax Earthshade. In order to highlight the helmet slightly, I'm going to first mix a little bit of uh, Vallejo Russian Uniform into the German dark green, and I'm going to sort of apply that lightly everywhere except maybe around sort of the edges where that leather strap covers his helmet. I want to leave some dark lines to edge that. And then I'm going to finally take some just pure Russian Uniform and use that as sort of a highlight color. And I'm going to apply that sort of to the very top of his helmet, sort of blend it outwards, and also run it along the edge of his helmet there and blend it out a little bit. So he ends up with just sort of a slightly darker sort of ring around his helmet and it's lighter on the top and lighter at the sides. And if you want you can do this a little bit further even if you want to make say some um, khaki for example into your Russian uniform you can add even even more slight uh, slight highlight to that top of the hat and just along the bottom edges as well. Next I'm going to base coat the uh, leather areas of his uniform which include his boots, uh, his helmet strap, and also the strap going across the front bill of his helmet. And I'm using uh, German camouflage black brown for this purpose as I generally do when I am painting leather areas. Next I'm going to quickly uh, base coat the barrel of his rifle using some Vallejo chocolate brown. Next, the leather boots and the straps on his helmet are going to get a fairly um, comprehensive overall highlight of Vallejo uh, leather brown. So yeah, this can go pretty much everywhere except really down in any folds or creases that you've got. And now I'm going to use some foundry chestnut brown shade to apply very light edge highlight to his boots and uh, straps, but this should be very transparent and only uh, uh, very sparing, so on areas of high wear. I'm going to apply a lot more of this color then to the stock of his rifle so that it's pretty thick here, though I'm always going to sort of start at the top areas where light is hitting and sort of blend down from there. But you can definitely feel free to apply several layers of this color so you get a nice strong red looking effect. I'm then going to move on to some chestnut medium from Foundry, and this is going to go on the boots and other straps too, but then only the tiniest indication, just a teeny tiny bit for areas of really extreme light or wear. Just really, you just really want to touch it to these areas because you don't want them to get too light or too much 
uh, like the color of the rifle because I'm going to take the uh, chestnut medium color and I'm going to apply it then pretty heavily to the barrel of the gun so that we get a really orange, yellow looking honey colored wood. So again, just like with the chestnut shade color, I'm applying it really towards the top of the rifle stock and blending it downwards from there and being careful sort of to make sort of edge lines between the different areas of wood. But again, you can really feel free to apply this pretty strongly just because we want the gun to feel nice and kind of orangey yellow looking. Finally, it's time to deal with the metal areas. Normally, I base coat my metal with a combination of German gray and a Vallejo Air gun metal, but I didn't have any Vallejo Air gun metal here. Uh, so instead, I used Vallejo Air black metal, which is kind of a similar color, but it's actually a lot darker and it's a little bit actually more metallic. But nonetheless, it'll work in a pinch. So I've mixed it into my German gray and I'm now going to base coat the metal areas of the rifle, uh, the top of his water uh, canteen, and just any little snaps or buttons that he's got on his equipment pouch. And then once that's done, I'm going to make a bit of a highlight color for the metal just by mixing a little Vallejo Air Steel into that sort of initial shade that I had because the black metal is just too dark on its own to make a very good highlight. So I'm now applying that very, very lightly to the, sort of the tops of all sort of metal areas. And here's our finished World War II American GI. Uh, this infantryman is kind of the backbone for pretty much all World War II American armies and his uniform was also worn by a lot of other more specialist units in some sort of form or another. So this paint guide should really help you out if you're trying to put together an American World War II army, either of basic soldiers like this guy or just other more sort of related units because there's just so many commonalities. I realized that my technique that I used here was probably uh, more involved than many people might have chosen for such a basic figure, but I also wanted to show you if you want to make a very simple figure like this look nice and really stand out, how you can go about it, what techniques you can use, and a lot of it comes down to just uh, blending and spending some nice time, you know, making sure you get, you know, good, subtle transition and variation in the colors of, you know, the pants and the jacket and whatnot. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like it, please share it, leave me comments with what you thought as always, and you of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't got a chance to already so that you can keep up with what's going on. And uh, I think that is all for now, so I will see you next time and uh, happy holidays since this video is going to be coming out right before Christmas.